Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Dhamma meeting where we will discuss the Buddhist practices of charity, morality, and meditation. Everyone who's interested is welcome to join. We shall start with our first participant, which is Felicia Chan. Good evening, Prajan. Uh, my meditation progress is good. My practice in mindfulness and wisdom is going well. Since I moved out from Jhana to contemplate Vipassana on 32 body paths, I can see my awareness and wisdom have become strong in daily life. I can also see myself remain mindful and wisdom continuously with peace, with peace and care of everything. Uh, Prajan, I have a question. Every time when I meditate and contemplate 32 paths, uh, uh, 32 body paths, I feel that whole body has completely disappeared. That, that is no self. Only awareness, very clear and peaceful. May I know how do I improve from uh, my practice from here? Thank you. Well, if it's not your body, then you should not have any concern with it. Whatever happens to it, whether it gets sick, uh, whatever happens to it, you should just treat it like somebody else's body. Can you do that? If you go to the doctor and he said you have stage three cancer, what would you do? <laughs> uh, you have to ask yourself this question. So this is not your body, right? Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Selfless. You don't worry I'm about happy. my you don't worry about my body. If I get cancer, stage three cancer, you don't feel any worry. Yeah? No worry. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So you just you should <laughs> look at your, control. Yeah, you should look at your body like you look at other people's body. Yeah. Because it is not your body. I'm very happy. Thank you, Prajan. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your guidance. Uh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Help, help me to improve so smoothly. Thank you. Okay. Happy to hear that. Hope you keep okay. up with your practice. Okay. No more than that, Prajan. Sadu, sadu. Next, Machi Billy from Indonesia. Good evening, Panachan. Uh, today I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. Go to York Base. Yeah. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? I, I forgot what, what was the correct one. Uh, good evening, Brother Chan. Yes. Yeah. Yokme, yeah. Yokme. Oh, Yoki. Yoki, Yoki. Yoki. <laughs> okay. Have you been away for a few weeks? Uh, yes. Any question tonight, today? Uh, Yes, could I ask uh, two questions? Uh, if the person, right, doing you, treat you good, could I, which word should I have to say? Uh, satu or sapai, which word is better? When there's somebody do good, do good thing to you, you say thank you, right? Because in Thailand. <laughs> you mean in Thailand? Yes. Yeah. Well, satu, which actually means good deed, very, it, it means very good action, yeah. Okay, notice, yeah. When somebody says, do this something good, you say satu, yeah. Very good, actually it means very good. When you say satu, satu. When you see, uh, somebody, notice, yeah. when you see somebody doing something good, you say satu, satu. Very good, very good. Notice, yeah. And one more question. Uh, could I hear, uh, uh, listen with the uh, Ajahn King Dhamma talk? 
speak. Can you listen to, uh, to my talk? Uh, no, Ajahn, Ajahn King. Ajahn King. You can listen yeah. to anybody. It's like, you know, listening to different singer. You can listen to Elvis. You can listen to the Beatles. <laughs> It's up to you what you like. Okay, There's no, 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 no restriction. You just have to find the right one for you, which you find the most beneficial or help you in your practice. Or if you find two teachers good for you both, then you listen to both of them. That's the matter. Okay, notice. Yeah. Okay, and also my meditation way right, is uh, like a 45, still uh, remain with the 45 minutes. And then my weekly, I still keep a uh, two day, uh, 8% is good enough. No, it's good enough for me. Well, if you sit, when, sit until you want to get up, then don't get up yet. Co continue sitting and start reciting mantra or chanting. Then you can extend your sitting longer. Okay, notice. Thank you, uh, Prajan. You can, the more you practice, the better. It's up to you how much time you can put in for your practice. The more the, more the better, because it's like digging, practicing Dhamma is like digging gold. How much time you want to spend on digging gold? Uh, notice. Thank you, Prajan. Thank you. Okay. All right, next, Kwan Liman from Malaysia. Uh, Tan Anjan, uh, I heard Tan Anjan answering uh, Q&A uh, and uh, Tan Anjan mentioned that it takes many, many millions of years before we can have the opportunity to be born as a human and to come across the teaching of the Buddha. Uh, so if I cannot attain Sotapanna in this lifetime, it means I have to come back many millions of years before I come across the teaching of the Buddha or even meet uh, a good teacher again? Even longer. I mean, even longer. because you, a Buddha will appear in the world once in a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So your next birth as a human might not run into the Buddha or, or his, his teaching. Then you would have to wait for the new Buddha to become enlightened and then teach the Dhamma again. And then when you return the next time, you might not, it depends on whether you're lucky or not. Your birth as a human being sometimes coincides with the birth of a Buddha or Buddhism. Like like now, like like this this birth we have here, it just happened to coincide with the existence of Buddhism. But it doesn't mean this will be the, the case every time you be born as a human being. Mm -hmm. So I mean, don't worry about the time, the the, the the length of time. Just just know that it's it's harder to meet it's harder to meet the Buddhism to be born as human and meet Buddhism than winning a, a jackpot, lottery jackpot, like Powerball. Yeah. Okay, I'll put that into perspective like that. How much ex how much do you expect to win a, a jackpot or a lottery? You don't expect to win one, do you? No. <laughs> okay, well, that's the same thing as being born as human and meet the Buddha teaching or, he, or the Buddha himself or one of his disciples. It's like winning a, a jackpot, not a jack, jackpot. Powerball. So rare. Because yes. I always thought maybe after I die in this lifetime, then when I, if I can reborn as a human in the next life, then I can still continue uh, meeting what, what should you what should worry what should you worry about the next life when you what you should do now is you you just won the jackpot and you should go catch the money. Why worry about why worry about the next jackpot when you already got one? Go catch the money. When you win the jackpot, what do you do? You go catch the money. 
So when you meet Buddhism, you go and catch the the the, the prize, Maka Pala Nibbana, mm. by practicing Dana Sila Pavana. What are you waiting for? Waiting for yes, the next I'm... life to meet the Buddha again? You're I'm wasting your time, then you're wasting your, your precious time this life. Not do anything. This is your defilement trying to distract you from go from going catching on catching on the prize. Yeah, um, Tanaja, I'm I'm practicing every day, but uh, I might not be able to get the jackpot. <laughs> so that's because you don't practice hard enough. Okay. If you, if you do, you should be a meshi and living in the monastery right now. Mm. <laughs> Okay, so it's your fault, no? and now you're just sit, sitting here worrying about the, your next life, your next jackpot. It's not easy to win two jackpots, you know. One is hard enough already. Now you expect to win another jackpot. And what's the use of winning a jackpot if you don't cash, cash the prize anyway? But yes. next time you you are born and you meet the Buddha and you will say the same thing again. Will I be able to meet you again in my next lifetime? Yeah. Okay, you should you should change your attitude. You should change your 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 outlook. You should change that. I have to do it now. I have to go and catch the prize before my time is over. Like before my time is up. Yes. Okay. Okay. Don't yes. worry about next time, next future. The future is, is a long, long way and very uncertain. You have something already certain in your hand. Why don't you take take advantage of it? Make use of it. Okay. It's simple. Um, Dana si la pavana. Mm. Dana, keep up all your money and go live in the monastery. Yeah, I'm waiting for sale of the property, Tanjan. And no sale, um, just leave it there and just just go. You know. What, but I, I still owe the bank. I leave it there and then the let, bank. Let, let, let the bank possess the the land, repossess the, the the house, the land. You don't have to do it. You just leave it to the bank. If you don't pay no, them, then they cannot because they will blacklist me and I cannot travel anywhere. So what? You don't you, you don't use any money, you don't go anywhere once you live in a monastery. <laughs> so I really? cannot go to Thailand again. <laughs> I didn't go anywhere the last 50 years. I stay in the monastery all the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go anywhere. You don't want to go anywhere. What you want is to go inside. Where you want to go is inside. Inside yes. your mind. Okay. It's up to you. I already give you the the best <laughs> recommendation whether you want to take it up or not. It's up to you. Whether I want to take the jackpot or not, yes, <laughs> See, your this your defilement keeps finding excuses, distraction, yeah, to prevent <laughs> you from going cashing on the price. Yes. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Tan Anjan. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Welcome back another guest, San Sajal Ka from Silver Spring, Maryland. Long time. Where have you been? Um, um I have I have been I have been just down with, with uh situations uh which you already know. So uh that's like ongoing thing and uh the only thing that I'm, I'm very, very thankful to you for teaching and the the key thing is mindfulness and and even these difficult times when I have the mindfulness in my palm and I remember to use it, it's like a panacea. It solves, it solves problems again and again and again. The moment I forget to use it, that's the time I suffer with the other people. And 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 it's also like like a like a stormy sea and 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 Dharma is like the lighthouse, and 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 when when the things are kind of very very difficult, if I have the mindfulness to have the glimpse of the thing that the lighthouse is still there, then I'm okay, and it's actually beautiful, and I'm actually 
I'm thankful for your teaching. As you are mentioning just now, that when you have got the jackpot already, why wait for another jackpot? So it is indeed the, the jackpot. And, and so long as I have the mindfulness available to me, make myself available of, of, of that, the simple things about mindfulness, then lot and lots of the problems and pain and sorrow and the suffering is, is, can, be, can be just like that. They can just be kind, kind of cut away. And and I think it's it's I think it's your beautiful teaching and and, and simplicity of the thing that I, I truly appreciate. I have no questions and and I'm going through still going through a very difficult period of time and hopefully I'll survive. But but I will survive and I am surviving. I think it's Dhamma is the one that's the the light and that's the light and and I think I thank you for your teaching, uh, my teacher. I give you one reminder. This might help solve your problem. Just saying that you, when you come into this world, you didn't take anything with you when you came. And when you leave this world, you don't take anything with you either. Okay, look at that starting point and the end point of life. Then you get the right perspective. Then there's nothing for you to worry about because whatever you worry, you don't take it with you anyway. And nobody takes anything with them anyway. <laughs> Everybody leaves everything they have here in this world when they go. And everybody has to go one day sooner or later. Thing like this, and then you can become a lot of less detached, less, less attached to things and people. Yes. Thank you, Tanajan. It's like when you go into the casino, when you when you want when when you want to start playing, you, you don't take the chips with you, right? You exchange the chips for something else, you know, for money. So you don't take anything with you in this world. You give it as dana, charity. Then you take the merit from charity with you. Okay, you might not understand this, this yet, right? No, no, I think I, I think I do understand, and I actually appreciate because uh, I've been listening to your things and, and and reading about about the things I, I, I take that in. But uh, um, and as you were saying, you know that that I'm not going to take anything with me, and so what is this hesitation? And uh, so long as the dhamma actually sinks in properly, then 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 more and more of the things will be my sorrow will be actually will be removed. But it's my attachment, my craving. And the defilements that that I'm successful in removing and dealing with from moment to moment, and and as you say, you know, 24 hours as when you are awake, then the things just work out, and there is no doubt about that. And and the, I'm kind of living in the company of fools, really, right? I mean, this is the, the thing that that you, you may tell them about dharma, but they would not go. So it's their problem, really. And of course, not that I I'm not suffering because I'm in the company of fools, but. I'm at least lucky to have Dhamma on, on, on the on site and, and listen and try to learn and apply. So that's all I can and hope for. And, and I think that I have to make the most of what the time that I have left and actually practice, as you say, you know, practice. So that's what I would like to like to keep on trying to do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, yes. Try to put all your effort into the practice as much as possible, especially mindfulness yes. all the time. From the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, don't yes. be without mindfulness. Yes. Yes. Okay. Next, Thank Piao Wapola and partner from Toronto. Indira, yes. Indira Bad. Indira, okay. So nice to see you, Bante. And thank you so much for dedicating this time for us from so far away. We are so inspired by your teachings and yeah. seeing you. Thank you. We come to the office early and switch off the phones and before I start work at 10. So have a session, you know, inside the office. Okay, good. We are so blessed. Yeah. We are so blessed. I have a question, Bante. Uh, like you said, we keep doing dana, sila, and bhavana the way we can. But I'm just wondering, when you come to this world, you bring a certain amount of like, parami and the karma. previous practices, the karmic process, everything. So is there like, uh, you keep doing, but I mean, sometimes in life, like children, you know, other 
old parents, 99 year old mother. So with all that, we keep doing what we can do. But is there like, with all those past, is there a limitation to where you can go? Like, how does it really balance work? Out. Balance out. How do you balance people? The thing is with the paramis, karma, everything you bring, is there mm -hmm. a certain uh, place you can go to? Like, or is it up to you to work, to go beyond what you have brought with you? Well, your, your merits or your paramis that you have built, it goes with your mind, whatever, you, so wherever the mind goes. But when I mentioned that when you came alone, when you didn't bring anything, I meant you didn't bring any possession, any material possession with you. Yes, yes. You, bring, you bring your spiritual possession, and this spiritual possession you can increase while you're in this world That's by true. practicing more bharamis. Like keep practicing more dana, practicing more sila, practicing more pamana, then you are increasing your spiritual wealth. See, this are, this are spiritual wealth, something that you take with you when you when, when the body dies. And eventually, if you can accumulate them to the full, to, to the fullest, then you will reach nibbana that way. Maybe in this lifetime. If not, maybe in a future lifetime. Exactly. At least you are shorten your your cycle of rebirth now. Exactly. Every That's time you, every time you increase your your spiritual wealth, you are decreasing your the number of a cycle of rebirth that you have to go through. Yes. And your cycle of rebirth will be in the heavenly realm not in the lower, lower realm of existence, because you have spiritual wealth. You don't have spiritual debt. If you steal, you rob, you kill, you cheat, then you're, you're building spiritual debt, which you would have to pay by yes. being born in the lower realms, the four realms of undesirable realm of existence, apaya. Thank you so much. Understood. Okay. Pia, anything? Uh, yes. Uh, now, uh, I have a, one uh, general question and one technical question. The general question is how now when you start practicing, uh, you know, uh, meditation and so forth, yeah, a certain amount of wisdom you attain. Now, we know this is the absolute truth at the end. It's a form of Emptiness, nothing. You're looking for something, but there's nothing at the end. But at, at, as lay people, we have to work. Uh, I'm, I'm being a physician, so I had to work with patients. Like it's an it's, it's a ongoing process. And again, you get pulled away from that truth. Again, you meditate. You, again, you say, oh, this is it. This is what's important. But again, you get pulled out again. So how do you balance this eventually? Like, can we... I mean, I see it as like two rings. Like, I mean, it can separate it out, but again, it goes like that. Uh, how, how do you how do you just pull it out and keep it out separately? You can, and then you this you can do this on your day off. The Buddha said, when you're not working, then you should concentrate on your practices. Um, pavana, sila, pavana. Go to a place, quiet place, be alone, and keep the eight precepts and meditate and mindfulness and and contemplate on the, 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 the five elements. You know. That's all there is in this world, it's just the five elements, the six elements, the water, wind, earth, earth, earth water, fire, and wind, and the, the, element, the, and the space element. That's all, that's all there, there is to it. And this, are, and this thing interact and create people and human, human being and animals and trees and everything that exists in this world, they, are, they all come from these six elements. They come and form and then they eventually they, they separate again. They reach. So pretty much the body, you know, the body is a, Everything, the body is the same thing. Yeah, it's formed it's a, with like the four a, elements. And yeah. the fifth element is a knowing element, the mind. Yeah. So you have to separate yourself from your 
the, the, the world that you that, we, that you live in right now because it's the world of uh, delusion. Every, you see everything as as thing as people, but in fact they are not things or people. They're just elements. <laughs> but separation is easy when you are meditating, I guess, uh, in the, right. that state of mind. But when you come out, it's tough again. You get pulled, so your defilements are so much, you get pulled out again. So and you keep going in but and if, out. if you go away for a couple of days, like on the weekend when you don't have to work, see, now you have more time to pull yourself away. Yeah. So when you come back and on your on your weekday, and then you 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 have something to to remind yourself that what you what what you're dealing with, working with, are just the elements. Yeah, I found it uh, true because on the week weekends when I meditate, I don't have a time limit. I don't have to go to work, so I don't care. So it it kind of it's it's much smoother. But when you're thinking of oh, I have to now this time I have to stop. I have to go to work. It's it's tough, right? That I guess that happens for everyone. Uh, for lay people like us. But if you have, you know, a day or two completely away from, from your yeah. uh, retreat, or you, yes. the retreat, then you, yeah. you'll have time to restart your mind see, to yes. zero. And then when yeah. you come back, you then you try to re, uh, remind your mind to stay at zero and not to be, not get involved with all this, this element that you're dealing with. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's very much more different. Uh, Ajahn Brahm, Tani Sarabhiku, you know, they were here. They were like, we did three, four day retreats. It's very much more different. It's so inspiring. Yeah, when you're doing a retreat, yeah. yes, you find it very, it's like a boot camp, but it helps to clear, cleanse the mind. But again, the department slowly pick, picking up, picking up, picking up, you know. But you have to do it regularly, not just waiting for us. So we do some, that. You have to do it on your week or on your day when you don't have to work. Instead yeah. of spending your time leisure for le for sensual pleasure, you should yeah. stop it and then yeah. we do that. Kind of of always we try to do that. I think I spend too much time in my garden, the yeah, roses does. and stuff. So I think I spend a lot of waste a lot of time. But try to contemplate whatever I can from the garden, like a book. I can learn a lot from the garden itself. You know, there's so much uh, to apply. So somehow I use that, but again, it's a defilement. I know I get. Pulled away. Yes. So this is my answer. If you want to, you know, be able to, sure. to see things, so see the, the absolute truth, you need to, to separate yourself come. from the conventional truth. You live in the conventional truth and you've been totally absorbed in them. And to believe that they are real. And in fact, they are not, they're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you see the absolute truth, then you know that everything is just element. Yeah. Just like dreams, like passing away, like uh, illusions, right? But it's hard to see it. Like we see it as solid. It's there. The, yes. the plant is there. The rose is there. But it's really arising and passing. When the conditions are right, it's there. The conditions are gone, it's gone. So really nothing in between. Everything form and then they, they, they disintegrate and yeah. then we reform again and then we disintegrate again. This, this so this cycle we get caught to. Yeah. yeah. Without, without seeing the uh, gap between. You know, you have to, to look at the building block of everything. Yeah. And then the building blocks are the four elements and, mm. and then inv invisible element, which is the mind, the knowing element. Plus the space element. I have a technical question if you have a bit of time. Go ahead. So this, uh, when the eightfold path, uh, when we kind of subdivide you to Sila Samadhi Pagna, uh, I think the first two steps, Samadhi to Samasankapa is uh, uh, like generally considered to be Pragna. So it's the opposite, Pragna Sila Samadhi. But I feel, uh, Maybe there is another two factors added at the end, eight, uh, the eightfold path, right? Uh, and those are the results of the, or the fruits of the path. Those are, that is called Samma Jnana, Samma Vimukti, or right knowledge and right release. So if you really uh, subdivide Sila Samadhi Prajna, maybe you can uh, see the last two factors at the Prajna, the wisdom part. Whereas Sila, uh, the mental Sila is coming from right view and right intention. 
uh, then comes uh, the speech uh, action. So that is a, a bodily seal and the verbal seal. So you can really uh, uh, subdivide the, the tenfold factors into seal samadhi prajna. Is it a, like a better way rather than going backwards samadhi, uh, like uh, prajna seela samadhi? I, I think that's in one sutra, it talks about it. I think that kind of confuses. And I think it was taken all along with seela samadhi prajna, the eightfold path. I believe my uh, uh, idea is it is a tenfold factor, so it is seela samadhi prajna. Uh, what do you think of that idea? I think you should follow the sila samadhi prajna path. Start with your sila, keep your precept, and go meditate and get jhana. Once you have jhana, then you then can contemplate on the four noble truths and the three characteristics of existence. There's no 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 confusion that way. But you start mm. to think about all this. I don't know what you've been thinking about, but you you, you don't have to know all these things really. Yes, I just to know how to keep the eight precept or the five precept. Just yeah, know how yeah. to meditate, to get into jhana. I, I understand practically. I'm just uh, trying to yeah. sort out some theoretical, like uh, I'm writing something. So I, I just want to see the ticket of your idea. I want to reflect of you. I know. I, I, everyone, even when they started, they started the, the, the noble eightfold path, they asked themselves, why start with the, the wisdom part? Yeah, that's what when, when actually when the Buddha taught us to practice to start with sila samadhi and panya. So that's what I thought. Maybe eight or ten four factors might be more appropriate. The last two being the prajna, right? Uh, uh, Samanyana, samavimukti. You know. I think you. I think you have to consider the situation in which this sutta has been 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 given. He, was, uh -huh. he, he gave it to the five ascetics. Yeah. And the five ascetics already have sila and samadhi. So right. he didn't want to spend time with sila and samadhi. He went directly to wisdom. Straight to the practice. See, because, because that's what they needed. So he started with the, the sama city and sama Singapore, the four noble truths and the three characteristics of existence. See, because they don't need the samadhi or sila. They already have, they have sila yeah. and samadhi. But what they lacked was, was the the sama the panya or sama titi and sama sankapo. Yeah. So you have to put this this teaching in the right context. Right it context. Taught, yes. It was taught to somebody who already has sila and samadhi. Mm -hmm. So you yes. don't need to tell them to practice sila, practice samadhi, because when they already had. And they had. So he went straight to panya. Mm -hmm. It's like the short uh, sermon given to Daruchira. Uh, when you see, you only see it. He already had the practice. So yes. instead of giving yes. a little bit of a pointer to form him to get to inside right away. That's right. Uh, How to deal with all phenomena. Just, yes. to, just to leave them alone. <laughs> that's what he was trying to say. Leave the everything alone. Just see and just see. And don't do anything about it. Don't do anything. Just to disturb it. Yeah. I always tell him he's very technical. No, no. I, mean, <laughs> I think that was uh, also uh, kind of turned into a, a meditation practice, I guess, in certain parts, uh, certain tra traditions. I see, I see, I, I hear, I hear. Sometimes it's probably not that fruitful unless you have the previous, you know, as you say, Sila Samadhi, Prajna part doesn't really matter a lot. You can just contemplate, but doesn't mean you get into prajna because by say, I see, I see, I hear, I hear. I mean, maybe you can short circuit your thoughts, but doesn't really uh, generate wisdom. Well, you have to find that out yourself, find the answer for yourself. You have to practice really and start with sila first. Okay. Uh, if you still have using a lot of money to buy buy happiness with money, and then you just you should give that money away. Don't use money. Don't don't use money to buy happiness. No, because we always give away. I do. I roast <laughs> roses. I I can buy a lot of <laughs> gardening stuff. But anyway, that's a different story. Thank because you. Man. It makes you addicted to money and dependent on money. Yeah. I love giving. I always give, but I have. Yeah. 
I feel very happy giving away. Yes. Give all like the Buddha, he gave everything. Even mm. his family. <laughs> Can you give up oh, his family? That's <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's good. Uh, that's the well, you want to ban and that's what you have to do. Yeah, that's she, probably the, the, the You cannot have your cake and eat it too, you know. I think she always says that uh, kids are the most difficult, uh, the final attachment. I guess it is true, for a, especially for a... Practicing Bhante, practicing. Yeah, so. <laughs> try. <laughs> just thank just go so. to see La Samadhi and yes, thank then you. you will be able to, to let go eventually. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so thank much. Thank you so much. All right, next, Vandana from Santa Clara, I think, California. Thank you, Ajahn. I don't have any question, just reporting, practicing for your guidance, keeping the eight precepts, just except the uh, food one, which I have to eat uh, after a certain time, like three or four. So just that, that one is hard because I'm working. I have too many students this semester. <laughs> so my mind is always working with them, but I'm, tr I'm trying my best for the seven precepts. And also meditation is becoming more and more uh, refined and it's happening naturally now. It's like I have to, I can't spend more time uh, doing anything else, just walking and sitting meditation is happening. And I'm reading some Dhamma books besides that's that's all uh i have to say that that's that's how i'm spending my time it's mostly with uh mostly with dhamma and meditation practice besides when i'm not working that's good don't spend your time on sensual pleasure try to stay away from them and spend it on on dhamma practices walking sitting mindfulness reading dhamma books is not how Clear Mountain Monastery has every day 4.30 to 5.30 meditation in the morning. I just finished it uh, before the session. And in the afternoon, they have until from 5.15 till 5.45. And But I also have alarm for my uh, afternoon meditation. So I do it like three times and before sleeping also. So it's like four times. So it's, it's, it's happening naturally is that it's pulling me so much that I can't even do anything else is I'm it's, it's not I'm not trying but it's, it's it's not even I'm not getting pulled by the sensual pleasures anymore just sometime yes. I've the more practices you do then the stronger the Dhamma will pull you toward the Dhamma then away pull you away from the sensual pleasure yes, yes. good okay thank you next Professor Ken from Switzerland Good afternoon, Tana John. How are you? Uh, fine, thank you. I would like to ask a question regarding when um, coming out of the sitting meditation. I mean, normally when coming out, the thoughts more or less quickly or slowly start to come back. But I notice sometimes it's quite paradoxical when I've been more calm during the meditation, then when coming out, the thoughts come back more quickly and more strongly, almost overwhelming uh, at times. So I just wondered if you could comment on the cause of that and what to do. That's because uh, when when you meditate, you you put pressure on your defilement. See? You, you, you prevent your defilement from, from thinking and going after what your defilement wants to do. So when you stop meditating and you're not using any mindfulness to control your thoughts anymore, so the pressure that, that, that was built up inside the defilement then start to rush out. Mm. So what, in, what you should do when you, when you come out of meditation is to continue with your mindfulness practice. Mm. But usually you say, oh, you had enough of it already. <laughs> So you, you don't want you didn't you don't have any mindfulness level at all. So you let your thought come come out, you know, and let your refinement tell you what to do. So that's that's it. You know, when you meditate, you push your your inside, you lock it up. 
So mm -hmm. it, it, it tends to build up this pressure in the defilement. So when you start meditating and you're not controlling your thoughts anymore, then your thought will just come out yeah. real strong. Yeah. Okay. It's like when you turn on the, uh, what you call, a bottle of a soda pop. <laughs> when, you, when you open it up, you know, the pressure inside will just all come out right away. But after a while, then dissipate. The pressure okay. disappears. Okay, so the key is to keep mindful after. Yes. As soon as you come out, continue with your your mantra or whatever. Okay. Just, you know, and only allow you your you use your mind to think only when you when you really have to think. What do you what you have to think? But if you don't have to think about anything, keep it, keep it, you know, keep it down, keep it still. Okay. So mindfulness is always important, even before, during, and after meditation. <laughs> Yeah. You need you need mindfulness before because without mindfulness before you cannot meditate. Mm -hmm. And during meditation you have to be constantly mindful. Mm -hmm. And when you come out of meditation, you have to continue with your mindfulness. But usually you don't see that's a problem. So yeah. when you don't you don't maintain mindfulness when you come out of meditation like you did before and during. So your thought came out very came out very strong. Try it next time when you come out. Try to maintain the same level of mindfulness you had before and during your meditation. Okay. Okay. That's very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Next, Diana from Wales. Greetings, Tanajan. Um, I have some friends. One of them is uh, at the end of life and the family are, are so distressed it's really painful to watch them um but i feel like there's nothing i can do <laughs> that's right they should put things in perspective that they also will have to go sooner or later we all have, we all have to go just you know, it's just a matter whose turn it is that's that's all that's the difference but you have to look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is like we will all have to go. And when we when we get rid of the body, when we die, it's the mind that lives, that remains, um, That's right. that moves on. The mind, what, detached, what, the mind detached from the body. The mind, what, where will it go? No, what's the difference? between the, the sort of Western concept of soul and the, and the Theravada um, understanding of mind? Well, mind is, is just a, a natural phenomenon, a phenomenon. You know, the mind is like what is like the other elements, you know. The water element, the earth element, the wind element, the fire element, the space element, and the mind element. The mind is a knowing element. It, it is just one of the natural phenomena. And there is no self in all this, in all this phenomena. There is no self in the, the earth element. There is no self in the water element. There is no self in anything. But I think the soul still have a self in the soul, right? Mm, I think maybe. I don't really, it's hard to understand it, isn't it? But what you say makes makes sense to me. Thank you. Yeah, the Buddha said anatta, everything is anatta, mm. no self. Mm. If you can see the water as having no self, then you should see the mind the same way. The mind also mm. has no self. But they have qualities. They might have this knowing and thinking quality. Why the water has this wet, wetness quality. The fire have this heat quality. But the, the self is identified with what, what we sense through our body. The self is created by the mind, by, by the thinking, by the delusion of the mind. It's, it's like somebody writing a, a, a fiction, a novel. 
we are we are creating this 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 self. Eh? It's a fictional character. See, it's not real. The mind is the, the fiction writer. Our mind, the think the thinker is a fictional writer, and it creates a self in you, in me, in everybody, and put a name on everything like mother, father, sister, and brothers, and something, this belongs to me, this doesn't belong to me, you know, and all these fictional values created by the mind. And the mind, that, that with a lack of wisdom, believe it wholeheartedly, completely, and tell that everything belongs to it, right? When you have something, you feel everything belongs to you. This person belongs to you, that person belongs to you. So when something happens to them, you feel sad. But if you, if, if other people that doesn't belong to you don't feel sad, whatever happens to them, right? And they are the same. The body, your body and my body and everybody's body is the same. It's made from the four elements. Mm. So how can we be, be, be selective with one body and not, and not with the other body? Feel sad with this body, but you don't feel sad with that body. Mm. Because you don't see the truth, you see the, the fictional truth, and you put value on different bodies. Somebody close to you, you, you put a value, you cling to them. If somebody else's body, you don't cling to them. So without, when you don't cling to the body, then you, that body doesn't bother you, whatever happens to that body. But if you cling to a body, then when, whenever happens to that body that you cling to, then it, it gives you, gives you, you, you problem, you know. Mm -hmm. So you have to try to look at everything as just the composition of the six elements. If you can see that, you see everything as elements, then mm. you, you don't feel sad. Mm. Compared to a tree, if you see everybody as a tree, <laughs> there's no self in a tree, right? And the tree is impermanent, the tree grows and dies. So is the body, the body born and die. same thing. Mm. It's, it's it's strange because um, I, I sort of feel there's a stress and I don't feel that for myself. I mean, I'm not in their situation, but it's just watching their distress is, is hard. Well, someday when it happens to your own body, you, you might have, have the same stress with them also. <laughs> if you discover that you might have to die one soon, you know. And see how your mind react to. The, the we don't situation. know though. <laughs> we don't so know you, though because it could be today. <laughs> yeah, you have to. You have to practice now. So you have to imagine. Yeah. You have to do the yeah. homework now. Yeah. Pretend that if if you should be diagnosed with some 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 serious disease, you know, illness. What? How would you react to that situation? And and how would it make you different in your in how you live the rest of the day? <laughs> That's right, the rest of your life. <laughs> you see things in a different perspective. Mm. Mm. That's why the Buddha said, contemplate on death a lot. We should, we should mm. contemplate on death a lot because it will give us the right perspective toward life. Mm. Because life is, life is temporary. Right? It's mm. going to end up in death one day. But if we don't contemplate on death, we forget. And we think life will go on forever. <laughs> Mm. You have you have to die before you die. Yes, <laughs> that's right. You have to remember to die. Mm. Mm. But we, we keep forgetting that we have to die, so we thought we're gonna live forever. I don't. <laughs> wouldn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tanishan. Okay, better now. Mm. Okay, maybe you can talk to your friend. Or maybe it's too 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 much of the truth for them to take. Mm, it's too much. Too <laughs> much. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, then then there's nothing you can do for them.
No, I cook. <laughs> I yeah, send but, food. <laughs> but they all will come eventually. When time passes on, they'll forget and then they'll come back. And they, mm. you know, they continue on living. Mm. I, funny enough, I was talking to my nephew about this and said, we don't die from grief. It doesn't kill us. We don't, you know, it's painful and we don't like it, but it doesn't kill us. <laughs> That's right. Mm. But it can cause you to kill yourself though, sometimes if you're not careful. Mm. Mm. For some... Mm. People kill themselves because of the, of, of the grief, right? Or mm. of the sadness. Mm. But if you, if you are strong, then you don't let the grief kill you. <laughs> mm. Mm. But if people is weak, I don't know how to deal with the grief. They tend to use killing themselves as the, as the solution. Mm. Mm. Okay. Something for you to think about. Thank you. Okay. Next, Gek Yen So from Penang, Malaysia. Hello, Dan. Yeah, no questions here. Yeah. Okay, NG, where are you from, NG? Malaysia. Malaysia, okay. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Tanajan. I have a question. I, I practice meditation more frequent now. And then I encounter when I, be, before that, I observe my breath. Breathe in, breathe out. I follow the breath in and follow breath out. And I remember one of the session he told Sulan say, "Don't follow the the breath the breath in and out." So I I say pay attention to the tip of the nose. So I do that, but my mind is like <laughs> monkey mind running here and there. Then when I come back to observe the breath, the tip of the nose. I'm not relaxed like that, like keep forcing like that. So it's how to encounter your this mindfulness problem? is not strong enough to force oh. you. You might have to keep watching the breath. So you might have to use the mantra or do some chanting for it. Uh, how long the, the mantra or the chanting? We need just to keep do. chanting, keep chanting. If you know some ch some chanting, do some like chanting. Like so chanting? Yeah, it will be so pakawa alaham sama samuto. Keep chanting mentally. Uh -huh. when, when, when you meditate, you, you, you cannot watch your breath, then just chanting instead. Also, that by sitting for like 40 minutes, I chant for 40 minutes. Or until, you, until, relax. until you find your mind become relaxed and you think you can watch the breath, then you can stop chanting and oh. continue on watching your breath. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, okay. Because when you start meditating, maybe your mind is still very active. Yeah. And also maybe your mindfulness is not strong enough yet. So you need to generate your mindfulness by chanting first. Mm. Okay. Or if you like to use mantra, or you can, some people use reciting the 32 parts of the body and also, you, you can also use that, it's up to you. Oh, okay. Because the 32 parts, I have I not yet memorized the thing. Okay, then you just mem you just chant something that you can remember. Yeah. Don't don't use the text. Don't don't open your eyes. It's just like meditating. It's just that you change the, the object of your meditation from from your breath to chanting instead. Mm. And chant until you feel your mind becomes more relaxed. And then try to, then you can come back and wash the breath. If you still cannot wash, then you have to keep on chanting again. Okay, try it out, see how it works for you. Yeah, okay. But like sometimes uh, we feel, we encounter pain on the, on the knee, on the leg. Let's so, ignore, ignore everything, you have to ignore everything. Mm -hmm. If you don't ignore, then you will lose your concentration. Then you will not be able to advance. You'll be stuck with the pain. You can, so ignore the pain. You know anything that has to do with the body, except the, the breath. That's all you want to focus upon. Oh, you're chanting. If you're chanting, just keep on chanting and 
and don't pay attention to any other thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, do. All right, try it out, see what, how, it, how it works for you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Thank next. you, Okay, next, people want to come out of home. Boise, Boise at the home. Thank you very much indeed for your do for the Buddhist community who follow your teachings. I also read your biography, it's pretty impressive. So I have three questions. The people who die from the natural disaster, isn't they karma? And number two question is the three calyx, the right state. Can, can you wait and let me take one question at a time because I'll forget you. Okay. For that. Yes. People people die because they are born, not because of, and the, their karma is being born. If you don't born, then you don't die. But uh, how you die doesn't matter. Okay. Hmm, so say can, it again. You can you can Please. die by accident, you can die by natural causes. You can die be, by being murdered, but it's the same thing. It doesn't matter. And the, and the cause of your death is, is your birth. If you didn't take birth, then you wouldn't have to die. And what about the people who die on the earthquake or tornadoes? Same thing. Because if they don't, if they are not born in this, in on this earth, then they won't have to have to to die. So don't don't born if you don't want to die. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The question number two: the three characteristics is our sila, samadhi, and wisdom. No, no. Three characteristics is the adicca, dukkha, anatta. Adicca means temporarily change, impermanent. Dukkha is suffering, mental suffering, and anatta is no self. Everything is no self. Your body, my body has no self in it. Okay, got I mean, that. It's an ija. You will get old, get sick, and die. And your mind, who is attached to the body, has dukkha because the mind doesn't want the body to, to get old, get sick, and die. Okay. What about Sila, Samadhi, and Wisdom? What is in English? That's, that's the triple training, triple training. Raisika, Raisika, triple you. training, training in morality, uh, training in charity, morality, and meditation. Uh, Sila, Samadhi, Panya. Okay. Thank you. And the question number three, I heard you say that often the sick element, is it Ayantana Tangho? No, no, this is the, the Tangho. Not to, not to. The ayatana are the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Hmm. Okay. I need to study more. Thank you very much. Okay. Next, Philip and Natalie from Malaysia. Okay, Tanjan. Uh, Adeline is listening in another room. Um, I, I have a question um, uh, with regards to fasting, um, which uh, we have discussed. Uh, how does one begin with it, and uh, what do you need to do in, in order to progress one day, two days, three days? And, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's just, just, just the question. Well, fasting is a, is a, is a tool you, you want to help you in your meditation practice. Because when you don't eat, your, your, your stomach is empty, your mind becomes more alert. And it doesn't become drowsy or lazy. So this is what you want if you want to, to, to spend all your time for meditation practice. Then you fast. If you find that eating can cost you some hindrance. But after you finish eating, you feel sleepy and you don't feel like meditating or doing any practice. So you lose time 
like going to sleep or taking a nap or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, even, and even after you finish with your nap, you don't see, you still don't feel like want to practice. You don't want to walk. You don't want to sit. You know? So if you you're not eating, then this problem would not be will not happen. So you you're clearing the hindrance so that you can then have more time for your practice. That's the purpose. That's the purpose of of meditating, of, of fasting, and also when you fast, your mind will constantly keep thinking about food. So this forces you to be more mindful. You have to use mantra or something to stop your mind from thinking. Because the more you think about food, then the more hungry you become. And eventually you, you might not be able to, 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 to last with your fasting. You might give up and go grab a, a bowl of noodles or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you are forced to meditate. You are forced to have to to control your thoughts. So normally, you, when you're not hungry, then you, when you eat normally, you, then you don't think about food after you finish eating. Okay, um, Tanajan, if you if you do it, uh, let, 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 I mean for 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 one day, and then if you are trying to push it to the the second. Uh, third day and so and so forth. Um, is it allowable uh, that you take sugary drinks? You know, sometimes you know if you pass too long, you may get a very bad migraine um, because you're low in sugar or whatever. Uh, is it allowable or you are not permitted? It's up to you. It's up to you. It can be helpful or it can be harmful. It depends on how you use it. If you use it for your defilement, then it can be harmful. But if you use it because you feel your body is weak and needs some energy, needs some 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 blood, yeah, you know, some some sugar in your blood or something, then you might want to take some some sweet drinks. Uh, the Buddha allowed honey and sugar. And you that you can take if you need to overdo it and <laughs> do it because you want to get rid of your hunger for instance and that's, that's not the goal if you want to do it to get rid of your hunger then you might as well stop fasting and go back eating instead mm. okay so but, but i can i can i can i, I can understand what you mean by uh, is it your defilement it can be very subtle that you know if you want to take sugary drinks it can be very subtle it, can be a defilement. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but but if you if you do if you do fast, right? Um, I mean, you you eliminate another thing which you don't need actually to go to the toilet that often. You know. I mean. Uh, yeah. Uh, you still you still have to drink water. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, of course. Yeah. But um. Yeah. The 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 big one you don't have to do. You know, you do, because you don't have a lot of input inside, right? Well, if you if it's just one day, it doesn't make it won't make much difference because the food that you have taken previously are still in your stomach, in your system, anyway, and they will have, they will come out. And your your fasting today doesn't matter, doesn't change anything. It might change the future though, maybe maybe a few days from now. But the food you take today doesn't come out today tomorrow, right? It takes a it has a, a long path before it finally get to its final destination. Yes, yes. So if you fast about two, three days, two, three days like that, um, that you probably would eliminate. Yeah, you start detoxing. You, like you can, you're detoxing. You're getting up all the old food, and you're having no no new food. So you you clean the body, maybe clear the the tracks. So, but, the, but that's the, not the purpose for, for fasting. We don't worry too much about the benefit the body gets from fasting. We worry about the benefits we get from the, for the mind. Right. So, so I mean, uh, it's it's allowable to take a bit of a sugary drink if you fast two three two three days uh, without. Yes, food. or even if you want to take a a, a glass of milk. 
you know, in the morning or something, you, you can do that also. But you just have to make sure that you don't take too much of it, that's all. Understand. Understand. Okay. okay. Thank you, Karajan. So you, you can say that it's not 100% fasting if you take milk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you can say partial fasting okay. because milk is considered to be food. Okay. But at least it's not heavy food and doesn't, and doesn't require much time for you to, to consume it. And, it. and it doesn't cause the hindrance that normally that you will get from eating normally. But this might have, you might do this after a couple of days if you want to fast longer, but you don't want to take the, the, the fluid. You just want to still maintain the, the light, empty stomach. But you, you, have, you might want to give the body some energy and you might take a cup of milk, a glass of milk or something. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. I can't, I can't, I can't but take it. Yeah. You have to try it out. But the best way, when you do this thing, you have to be alone. If you live with people who eat, it's going to be very difficult. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's actually, it's actually quite troublesome. Um, when I practice the eight precept days, right, and go to the village and collect food, and it takes about four or five hours before you finish with this process. If you fast, then you can remain on the mountain and continue with your practice, mm -hmm. and don't have to be involved in people or things that can distract your mindfulness practice or your meditation. Okay. Okay, that's one of the purpose is to isolate yourself from people and things. If you want to, to develop a lot of mindfulness, you don't want to be near people or things. You want to be alone. Because if you see people or things, they can distract you right away from your, your mindfulness practice. Okay, understand that, Jeff. All right. Okay. Thank you, Bajan. Okay. Next, Christine Koe from Penang. Good evening, Kamajan. Uh, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Um, Actually, uh, Tanajan does not have a very strong advice to the devotees just now. Then um, it's about the money or the cost of living. Um, actually, for me also having this kind of um, concern, I need to go to work and uh, earn my cost of living and um, so-called con conventional truth. It's hardly for us to let go the income that we earn now. Um, how do I get rid of this kind of um, uh, akilesa? Try to try to reduce your expenses. Only spend on the essential what you really have to spend, like food and rent. Um, you know, but but don't spend on on essential pleasures like like chocolate or cakes or things. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Live, and live cheaply. You can you can live cheap or expensive. Yeah. When you live expensive, usually you spend more for, for your defilement than on your body. Just, so just spend on your on for your body and don't spend for your defilement. Mm. And eat less. You don't have to eat three meals a day, maybe do two meals a day or something. Yeah, yeah, I remember Achan said, um, take it as medicine. <laughs> so medicine is bitter, not nice to eat. <laughs> yeah, so, so then you won't have to, to, to have to spend much money. Then you don't have to work too, too hard to, to earn money. You might be able to, to work just a few days a week and then have time for your meditation practice. Mm. Yeah, I, I just can't do, can't let go the income. <laughs> Maybe I I can I thinking like um I fight for another few years, then I I fully practice or or I should practice now instead of waiting. 
<laughs> I know the answer. You might not live two years from now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, now, yeah. now is the time. Here's the place. Do it now. <laughs> right now, after you finish this meeting, meditate before you go to sleep. That's it. Maybe one day I can be bored. Uh, I mean, same hair start with Ajahn. <laughs> yes, yes. You will be, because before that, when I started, my hair is not like yours. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the more you progress on, on the path, the, the, the shorter your hair becomes. Because you'll find it, it troublesome to keep the hair. You have to wash it, you have to comb it. You know. But you have no hair, then you don't have to do anything. Last time when I used to practice in a temple for eight precept, I have very short hair. Yeah. <laughs> convenient. And you don't have to spend money on, on your hair. Spend a lot of money look, looking after your hair, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have shampoo, you have to have all sort of lotion. <laughs> and when to want to dry it is so typical <laughs> because <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, hopefully I can um, back to my own practice. Yeah, another question, Tanajan, because I understand um, few of the uh, first stage of sainthood um, still live normal as uh, we we are, but I can see they are still having like, um, not not in a Sangha practice or in temple. Is it because of the OED uh, have the wisdom with them? Can you repeat the question again? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, Tana Chan. Uh, I I know few of the uh first stage of the sainthood. Uh, maybe it's sotapan or or sotapan. So they 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 like um normal people. They live like normal. Is it because they are already have the wisdom, so they do not uh, uh become sangha in temple? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean monk or or maji in in a monastery? No, no, no. I think uh, most of people who attain to, to enlightenment are mostly monks. Only, only a few lay people are exceptional. They are exceptional cases. Okay. So this is your misperception. You think as a lay person, you can become a sort of panda. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, every level of every level of enlightenment has to have jhana as the support, and to practice jhana is the best way to practice jhana is to become a monk, is to be alone in the forest, living alone, and so you can develop mindfulness and and meditation. If you live as a as a layman, it's almost impossible to develop jhana. Those laymen who become sotapanna, they might have jhana in from the past life already. Yeah. Because so I they, heard that they they were born in sotapanna. <laughs> or maybe some of them might have been sotapanna before, and they happen oh, yeah, to yeah. die. They die before they they reach the final attainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so I have to let go this kind of. Uh, understanding and practice more. Yeah, just concentrate on sila, nana, sila, pavana. Every time you want to spend money on sensual pleasures, give it away to the, to the poor, to the needy, or to the temple, or whoever you want to give to. Or save it for your, for, for your support. When you don't work, save it for your, for the day when you don't work, then you can rely, use this money to support your, your practice. Yes, yes. This is my dream. That's why I also don't want to have kids. <laughs> yeah, but don't spend money on central pleasure because mm. it's like spending on buying, buying addict, ad, like buying addictive drugs. You know. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, okay. If you can give the every step, then you won't have spent much money because you're not allowed to, to have an essential pleasure activity. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for clearing my doubts. Thank you so much.
try to live simple, mm. simple, cheap, and you don't have to spend much money. Mm. Only spend on the essential. Don't spend on the essential pleasure. Yeah. Practice more like Achan said, digging go. <laughs> mm. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Next, New Zealand, Anura and Ramya. Must be late for you, huh? Two o'clock. Yeah. Thank you, Dajan. Get. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you for your teaching, Tangaja. So today we start winter time. So we are one hour ahead now. I see. We start at one o'clock in the morning. So, yeah. So, it's one o'clock now. Yeah, it started at one. Yeah. One sixteen. And now is, I think, two, two sixteen in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for so. I had a few questions, but but you already answered all this stuff question in the past hour for others with other questions. So I have a comment, Ajahn. So sure, go ahead. Um yeah, I've been practicing trying to get into uh use Buddha. So I've been trying and trying to remember to uh, the practice Buddha mantra. So I think it's it's much, much better to uh, I find that even when I wake up early in the morning for uh, maybe two, three o'clock, so I, I remind myself to practice the word. I find that I can block most of the defilement if I continue to use a word when I remember. So that's a very good way of anchoring my mind like a, like a dog uh, leashing, uh, the attaching to a leash and then tie down. So the mind can be very controlled. But if I stick to the breath, then its mind goes away. So I find that uh, the Buddha is helping me a lot now. Yeah, just for comment, yeah. Yes, yeah. when you don't have much mindfulness, Buddha is, is, a, is a good way of developing. Yeah. But eventually, eventually, when you have lots of mindfulness, then you can just watch your breath when you yes. when it is. Yeah. yeah. Or you can use Buddha in you know while you meditate also in your life. Some people yeah. use Buddha only and don't use the breath at all. Yeah, yeah. So I think it helps as well, Ajahn, because at the beginning of the meditation, so mm -hmm. to get uh, a lot of calm, because only one word to breathe in Buddha and then breathe out Buddha. So just, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, just a comment. Yeah, thank you, Tamil. Oh, you can use Buddha alone without have, having to use the breath at all. If you like yeah. that, you can do that also. Okay, yeah. Okay. Ramya, do you have anything? Good question. Uh, yes, Sajan. Uh, would you like to share uh, how your first uh, letting go happened? Is it just at a normal circumstance or so during meditation or at a special situation? <laughs> Fully letting go of body heaven. How for you? How was it for you? Well, when you meditate, your mind will forget about the body. So it, it lets go of the body temporarily when you go into jhana. Because the, the body doesn't remain in the consciousness anymore, in the in the mind anymore. So the mind does, doesn't have anything to, to do with the body when you meditate. But when you come out of, of the meditation, the mind reconnect with the body. So then you have to keep remind yourself, remind the mind that this the body is not you. Yeah. The body is like a servant that you use to take you to 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 do what you want. You want to see, you want to hear, you need to have the body. So you have to keep reminding. This is what we call contemplating. Mm -hmm. Body is anatta, rupa anatta. Body is not myself. Body is temporarily. It can, it can, anything can happen to it. You can get all, get sick, you can get sick suddenly, or it can die suddenly. Mm -hmm. Or it takes a long time for it to get all, but eventually it's gonna get all, get sick and die in the end. Yeah. Just keep reminding yourself and not, 
not to get excited when things happen to your body. Mm. If you get excited, it means you, 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 you forgot that the body is not you. You, mm. you, you start to cling to the body when, when you get excited. Mm. But if you, if you can remain calm and not, not affected by whatever happens to your body, then it means you have wisdom. Yeah. Means you're not clinging to your body. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ajahn. Yeah, thank so, you, thank you. So, so, so you need both. You need the separation in during meditation. And then when you come out of meditation, you need the contemplation to separate the mind from the body. Mm -hmm. You constantly remind yourself the body is not me, I'm not the body, I'm, I'm the user of the body. And one day I'm going to have to lose this body. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. All right. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Thank you. Yeah. Next, Gary from Singapore. Gary. Uh, good evening, Tanachan. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Okay. Go to Steve. Steve. Did you have a hard time tonight coming in? No, much, much smoother tonight. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't have any questions tonight. I've just been listening and learning. Thanks. Okay. Right. I'll go to Coxing then. Coxing from Singapore. Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, Prajan. Yeah, tonight I'd like to ask about um, uh, some advice are uh, regarding uh, some stresses I'm feeling these few days. Um, my mother domestic mate has gone back uh, to her home country for home leave. So I'm staying with my uh, mother now. Uh, my mom, uh, she has some dementias and, uh, and she's also demand, at times she's also demanding. Um, so I just want to check Prasha, what should be the the right thinking so that I will not feel so stressed um, mentally. You have to look at her as, as a baby. She's like a baby now. So you just have to treat her like a baby. Okay. Because she doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't know what she's saying to you. So it's like a baby. She's like a baby. Her body might be old, but her mind might, might be return to a baby stage in which mm -hmm. there are times when the thing she says is quite hurtful. Just don't 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 pay attention. Don't 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 mind what she said. Let her say whatever she wants to say. Mm -hmm. now, also you have to think yourself as her servant. If you're a servant then you have no you cannot tell your boss what to do or what to say. Let your boss say or do whatever your boss wants to do. Okay. You're the servant. You're there to serve the boss. Not the other way around. People sometimes forget. They want to, to be the boss and tell the, the servant what to do. And this is where things can go wrong. So you, you're there to, to support her, to help her. But you're like a servant. So act like a servant and let's let her let her become the master of the boss. Just wait for her her, her command, whatever she wants to and, you to do, uh, don't do it for her if you can. Okay, for example, let's say uh, after eating about 15 minutes, then she complained hung, hungry again and she still wants to eat some more. Okay, give us a more. Uh, even though she has just uh, just eaten a meal. Well, that's what she want. Uh, as her, let her confirm that if that's what she want, if that's what she want, give it to her. Yeah. Then sometimes even when I tell her, oh, you, you've just eaten, and then she said, no, I haven't eaten. I know. This, you start raising issues. Yeah. Don't raise any issues. Just just comply. She, just wants keep to her, eat she, want, she wants to eat someone, just keep her. Yeah, so. okay. Uh, and today, uh, she actually wants to buy some oranges. She want to, uh, so I, 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 so I was uh, a bit hesitant, uh, hesitant to, to tell her 
whether to tell a lie or not to lie. So there's a, this uh, struggle. So uh, yeah, so so when I'm in the dilemma, like uh, do, do I like treat uh treat the my mother as a baby? So can I just tell a white lie just to pacify her? If you cannot tell the truth, then it's just better not to say anything. Okay. It's not good to lie, even if, because it can become a habit. Okay. Even though it's just to pacify her, so that yeah, she then, not, then you will always find excuse to lie. Mm -hmm. So I will just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. Not, not respond. Not respond. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Prajna. Okay, we have our new visitor here, Celia from Peru. This is your first time with us. Hello, Prajan. Yes. Good evening. This is my first time. I, I've been joining the Facebook, uh, but it's my first time in in the Zoom sessions. So I really don't have any questions. I'm more in learning mode. <laughs> Okay. But yes, I wanted to thank you very much for, for all your teachings. Even this session has been very, very helpful. No? I also take care of my mother. And this advice that you have just given to Coxen has been priceless. Mm -hmm. No, I, I've learned also with, with the years that the best thing is just to let her do whatever she wants. Mm -hmm. And that really that really makes the house to be more peace, the environment be more peaceful. Because if I start um complaining or saying this is not the way it should be really it's very it's very hard for both of us no? you, but really to yeah. see yourself as a servant <laughs> it really makes things just easier that's what loving, loving kindness is about it make people happy yes exactly yeah, yeah. many many thanks for that for that teaching okay well why are you in Peru in I'm in Lima it's Lima, the capital Peru, yeah. yes so now it's very very hot I, Have you ever been I also to have you ever Sorry? been to this, this part of Thailand? Have you ever been yes, to I've been to Thailand. I saw oh, I you uh, like for 10 minutes, like in February, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Thailand like for one month. I before see. going to India and to Nepal, I passed through your monastery, but I really stayed like 10 minutes or so. I see. Uh, yes. And then, well, I wanted to join because I really liked the things that, that you told. And as I said, I've already joined on the Facebook uh, session, so they have been very helpful, no? and they continue to be very helpful too. So, hope okay. I can continue joining. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Next, Belinda from Singapore. Hello, Tana Jan. I just say earlier six elements. I I'm not sure if I have understood correctly. I know of yes. four, and. Um, mm. The fifth is the, is the the knowing element of the mind. Mm. The the sixth is the space element. Mm. The space around you. So if there's no space, then you, things cannot exist. Things cannot come into. There's no place to put the 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 four elements. You need space for the four elements. You need you need space for your your body, right? If there's no space, then why, why can your body exist? So it's part of the, it's a, an, an invisible element. There are two invisible elements, the, the knowing element, the mind, and the space element. It's a negative element. Negative. It's emptiness, it's emptiness. That okay. space that, that, yeah, keeps, that, that allows uh, fire, water. Yeah, uh, allow the planet, the stars, and everything to to to, to be. Yeah, to, if, if there's no no space, then why can you exist, right? If, if we don't have space, why can this body exist? Mm. Okay, but the, the most important element is the mind, the mental mm -hmm. element, the knowing element, because the trouble starts in the mind. So dukkhas uh, are created in the mind by the mind's delusion, 
And our, our goal is to, to teach the mind the truth so that it can then overcome its own delusion. If it, if it understands that everything are just element, no, 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 no body, you know, no, no human, no animal. Everything are made from the four elements. Of the five elements. The four that we can see and the one that we cannot see is the, the, the knowing element. See, you can see me, see my body. It's just the four elements. But the one who's talking to you through the body, you cannot see. Mm. And if you don't study, you presume that it, it is part of the body that's, that's doing the talking. But actually, actually, it's not the body that is doing the talking. It's the mind that tells the body what, what to say. Without the mind, then the body will not be able to, to say anything. Like when a person dies, that, that person, that, that body has no mind to, to tell it what to do anymore. So the body just lays still, not doing anything, not saying anything. Okay. Have to move on now. Thank you, Tanajan. Thank you. Next, Alvin Lee from Malaysia. Good evening, Tanajan. I just have one basic question. Tanajan, if I go out with a group of friends um, and they order alcohol and I treat them, do I be, break the precepts, uh, Tanajan? I pay for the bill? Pay for the bill? Yeah. What, what precept are you breaking? They, they, they ordered alcohol, so indirectly I'm paying for their alcohol, right? So do I break the fifth precept? Well, you, you should make some understanding with them first that you are Buddhist and you don't support the, the, the drinking of alcohol. But you, you, you're not going to stop them. If they want to drink, they have to pay for their own drinks, that's all. You pay for the food, but not the alcohol. Okay. So indirectly, you break the precept, right? If you pay for it. Oh no! You, 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 as long as you don't break, you don't break the precept. Oh, you, even if you pay, then that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. But you're just supporting other people to drink. That's all. Right. Right. Thank you. Or encourage other people to drink, which is not good either, because that person can get drunk and then get angry at you and beat you up later on. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> okay. 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 I get right. it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Next, next be Ramin from Bangkok. Hi. Good evening, Prajan. Um, Prajan, I have a couple back? of questions. Are you back? The first one is. Oh yes, I was back since last Saturday. Last Saturday. It was a good. It was a good. It was a good trip. Okay. Back in Bangkok now. Back to work. Yeah, Prachat. Um, first question is: Is does jhana have a realm, or is it part of the knowing element? It's the knowing element that's resting. Stop thinking. That's so all. What it is. You can call it the activated mind. And that is usually it can be activated. It comes still, not sleeping, like the body when it goes to sleep. It doesn't move, it doesn't do anything or say anything. So then when the mind goes into jhana, the, the mind stops functioning temporarily. So jhana is something we can take with us after we die, right? It goes with the mind. It's just a quality or ability of the mind to calm itself. You have to train to, to be able to, to have jhana because normally your mind doesn't have the ability to calm itself. So it's just like, like the ability to swim. It goes with you, right? You learn how to swim. 
When you go, you'll learn, you'll know how to swim. So it goes with the mind. If you can touch it in, in Kajana, this life, the next life, you, you, you can also go in Kajana if you put your mind to it. Yeah, understood, Tanjan. Uh, then my next question is um, regarding um, concentration and wisdom. Usually, they should support one another, right? So if we cultivate enough samadhi, it will bring about wisdom. And if we bring enough wisdom, it will also support our samadhi. Is that no, correct? no, no, no. Samadhi doesn't bring about wisdom by itself. In order for you to get wisdom, you have to contemplate. You have to study the three characteristics and the four noble truths. Samadhi only gives the mind the strength to to apply the wisdom when you have learned that, the, that your dukkha is, is being caused by your cravings. If you want to stop your dukkha, then you have to stop your cravings. If you don't have samadhi, you won't be able to stop your craving. But if you have samadhi, then you, if, if wisdom tells you to stop craving, then you, 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 it, it will be able to do so. Wisdom tells the mind what to do. But the mind has to have the strength to do what the wisdom tell, tells the mind to do. Like right now, we all know craving is bad for us, right? Can we stop our craving? No, because you don't have any jhana yet. See? Mm. But if you have yes. jhana, you can stop. Yes. Simple as that. But samadhi doesn't, doesn't make wisdom come into being by itself. Wisdom needs to. You need to study that like you go to school. Knowledge, you know, wisdom is knowledge. So you have to study. You study science, mathematics, right? If you don't study, then you don't know science or mathematics. Then maybe you don't study the four noble truths, the three characters of a system, then you then you not have this wisdom. So you have to. Once you have mastered your jhana, your samadhi, then, then you want to move on to the next level. Instead of keeping your mind from thinking, now you want to force it to think. But in, a, in, a, in the directive, direction that you wanted to think about, which is the four noble truths and the three characters of existence, the six elements, for instance, or the asupa, the 32 parts of the body. This is what you want to study. You get rid of your, to be able to help you get rid of your cravings. So samadhi is just the tool that allows our mind to develop wisdom, but the development of wisdom has to come from us. Well, the mind itself has to develop it, the wisdom itself. Yeah. By following the teaching of, the, of a, a wise person like the Buddha. The Buddha is a teacher. We are the students. So if we want to be wise like the Buddha, we have to study from the Buddha. And the Buddha said, Know the three characteristics of existence, know the four noble truths. Once we know, then we, then we can use the knowledge to apply to apply to stop the dukkha that being created by the cravings. Right now you have the wisdom, you have the knowledge, but you don't have the samadhi, the strength of the mind to stop your craving. You know, watching movies is not good for you, but you still keep watching. Especially new movies coming out. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but if you have jhana, then you say, what, why what, watch movie? It's better for me to go into jhana. I have much, much, yes. much, much better pleasure going to jhana than watching movies. Yes. OK. Yep, so, so develop enough jhana, then start to cultivate the mind with wisdom. 
Yeah, when when you're not meditating, then you you, you keep thinking about the four noble truths, the three characteristics, the 30, 32 parts of the body, the ten corpses. These are the subject of for your wisdom development. You want to be well versed in this this subject. So 32 parts of the body is exploring the different like uh, organs of the body, right? To see that yeah. the body is repulsive, it's not attractive. That's right, to destroy the, the, the beauty perception. Because it's the beauty perception that keeps creating cravings for this body. So when you see the, the super, you, when you destroy the beauty perception and see the body as, uh, as ugly, as repulsive, then you won't have any cravings for that body. No sexual cravings for that body. Okay. Yep, Tanajan. That's that's very clear. Thank you for clarifying. That's all my questions. Thank you. All right. Thanks, God finding me. Well, good day to you, Tanajan. Yeah, I, I have. A question today, um, also uh, very similar to the med meditation uh, topic that we have uh, gone through. Uh, recently, I, uh, all this while I, I've been using breathing uh, as part of uh, the meditation with great success, but re recently because uh, working quite late, uh, I've tried to use uh, ETP so as well, uh, but, but that, that, that somehow, uh, why I did not use breathing at the first place because uh, it worked quite late and somehow it's, it's too calm until that I'm a bit uh, tired and falling asleep. So I try it, but, but somehow I feel uh, may, may not be ideal at that point because uh, it, it, it makes the mind even not too towards calm, calming uh, state. So I've tried to use uh, a mantra like puto puto uh, somehow with uh, a great success. Uh, just want to get uh, Tanajan advice. Uh, we just, the, the point is just we have to get the anchor point uh, to make sure that uh, in order to get the mind calm. Is that right? Whether it is using breathing, well, ideally I use breathing or use a mantra or chanting like ATP so, yeah. See, if you expect to calm the mind during meditation, then then you will usually not succeed. Because if you want to calm your mind, you have to pre prepare your mind before you meditate. Your mind has to be, uh, be controlled by mindfulness already before you, uh, you start meditating. But if before meditating, you, you, you leave the mind, you have to do whatever it wants to do. And you want to stop it when you start meditating, you will not be able to do it. Yeah. But, so actually, you have to tame the mind even before you meditate. You have to do it from the time you start, from the time you wake up. As soon yeah. as you wake up, you want to uh, you want to restrain your thought as, as much as possible. Yeah. Then, sure. your, then your thought won't be as strong when you meditate. Then you will find it easier for you to, to calm it. And, and enter into concentration or jhana. But otherwise, if you come and do, do it just during meditation, you won't have enough time yeah. to calm your mind. And no matter which technique you use, it's, it's not, it's not exactly. you know, effective. So you have to do more mindfulness before you meditate. Like when you want to stop your automobile at the intersection, you don't apply your brake at the inter intersection, right? You have to yeah. slow. You have to apply your brakes long before you reach the intersection. Right. Okay. Same thing with your mind. Your mind is like a, a an automobile. You know, that keeps running, and suddenly you want to stop it, and you, you step on the brake, and you expect it to stop. It won't stop when you you apply the brakes. It might stop maybe 200 meters later you know, down the road. Yeah. But then you don't have that much time. When you meditate, you can probably sit for 10 minutes and then you, you start to feel, feel painful already, so you give up. Yeah. If you, if you can sit for two hours, you might be able to get your mind to become calm. All right. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dan John. I, I know. Okay. Yeah. Some people expect to recite Buddha for one or yeah. two two minutes, and then the mind will become calm. No, if, if you haven't yet prepared your mind for 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 this meditation, it's going to take a long time before you can even get halfway there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank you. All right. Next, Apalachita goes Dubai. Good evening, Prada. You are serving Ramadan. Yes, I mean, not me, but everything in Dubai uh, has been. So my timings have got difficult. So unfortunately, I missed last one, but I'm yes. grateful that I joined. Yes. Okay, you have anything to say or ask? Uh, actually, just a small question. Um, one of my friend's father is going through perhaps a very difficult time, like uh, they've fallen a bit sick and they have uh, some dementia. No way, a lot of people have spoken about it. So um, I understand that it is a process of life, but um, is there anything I can do in terms of uh, offering meta or merit that can support the process? Not really. You know, this is something you have to do on your own. Everybody has to have mindfulness. If he's been developing mindfulness a long time before he gets to this point, then he probably won't have any dementia. Mm, yeah. I think dementia, part of the reason for having dementia is not having enough mindfulness. So there's nothing you can really do except you can support the physical body, but not the mind of that person. You might help that per person do things for for that person because you you might forget or you might not know what to do. Then you can do that for the body, like prepare food or something for the body. But as far as the mind, it's, it's too late to do anything now. Okay. So just uh, offer support through just physical means to make yeah. it more comfortable. Right. Yeah. Because okay. sometimes the person might not know what to do, mm. what to do, how to do things anymore. Then, then you have to step in and do that for, for him or her. Okay. And does offering uh, meta or merit have any the, benefit? The, that's what you do for that person is, is meta. You, okay. have to, you, know, you want to act like a nurse or a Santa Claus. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Let's uh, make that. Let's make that. All right. Okay. But you have to 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 apply to 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 think that make makes some difference. Yeah. You you don't sit there and pray for that person. That doesn't make any difference to that for that person. Okay. But you, you can help them that person physically so that he can live better. And this is made that. Of compassion. Okay. Thank okay. you. That's all. All right. Next, we check. I'm Toronto, from Vancouver. No, no question. So many nice questions and such helpful advice and Dharma teaching from you. Thank you, Ajahn. <laughs> Are you better now? Are you sweet? Yes, <laughs> getting better. <laughs> I don't have a good memory. <laughs> See, everything is, everything is on each other. Everything is temporary. You yeah. get sick and then you, and eventually you get over it. But you get sick again. And I get sick again. <laughs> <laughs> and then die. <laughs> as long as you have this body, you can never run away from sickness. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Many people. Thank you, Ajahn. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ajahn. Okay. So no comment either. Uh, yeah. It, uh, no. No time. <laughs> I think uh, okay. I should give my time. Yeah. Okay. We have two more people waiting. Julian Duong. I heard you were in Thailand. Are you still in Thailand? Hello. 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 I see. How long were you there? How long were you here? Um, I was there for um about six six weeks. 
with Ajahn Nippon? Yes. I see. It was very, very good. Better this time than before. Huh? Oh yes, I've um, I've realized that last time actually he exaggerated the problem so that I could pay back my my karma debt. Okay. Yeah. So I've 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 realized that. Um, and uh, this time it's so much better. I have to close my eyes, my ears, my mouth first, and then everything was so good. Mm. <laughs> I could yeah. I could do Nisati this time for quite long. Nisati. <clears throat> Yes, after yes. the Magaputa until I left, it was about like uh, nearly. It's more than it's more than two weeks, two three weeks. Okay. <clears throat> it was good, very good. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, you have any question? Um. No, I, I think I have no question. Just a comment, like people from Thailand go to Vietnam and Vietnamese people go to Thailand. <laughs> so. That's because of the delusion. The grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I um, Now I'm planning for the next trip, so. Okay, as long as, <clears throat> as, long as you have the Dhamma purpose, then this is not delusion. This is, this is, this is Dhamma. If you plan to yeah. go for meditation, you plan to go for, for peace of mind. And right. If you cannot get where you are, then you have to go somewhere else. Yeah. Thank you okay. so much. Okay. Good to see you again. Did you just come in to say hello? Yeah. Okay. Wish you all the best. Thank you, Tanachan. All right. Next, Mandy Smith from Canada. Good morning, Ajahn. Um, I don't have any questions this week. Just improving my practice. Okay. Better? Getting better? Yeah. Easier. A lot easier um, to just do that instead of anything else. Okay. Try to keep calm, stay calm using mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Okay, or wisdom, if you know how to use it. Yeah. Everything is temporarily, Anija. You cannot force things to be what you want them to be. They just be, you know, just have to learn to live with them, accept them for what they are. Mm -hmm. Then there will be no stress. Our stress, we are created, created because we want to go against the, the truth, the reality. But if we can accept reality, then there will be no stress. Mm -hmm. Okay, no question. No question, thank you, Rajan. Okay, go to Evie from Indonesia. Evie. Yeah, Ajahn Namo Buddha. Yeah, Ajahn, can you hear me? Yes. Ajahn, I have a question. As lay people, what should we do in collecting paramis? Well, you can do the dana barami first. Meta barami, dana barami, and sila barami. The bawana is include the parami? Yes, it's what is called beka, equanimity barami which you, you develop by meditation or pavana. And Ajahn often say, do it in this life. In future life, it's not certain to be able to meet Buddha teaching. But if yeah. a person, parami isn't, is not enough, then it's still the same as not being able to reach the level of uh, enlightenment in this life, right? No, you can, you can, it depends on, that, on your effort, how much effort you put in. If you put in, if you put in 100% effort, you can do it in this lifetime. The Buddha said seven days, seven months, or seven years. 
But if our param is not enough, Ajahn? You can do it, you can increase it now. See. Because to collect the, a lot of parami maybe takes a lot of rebirth. No, not necessarily. Only, only when you don't come across the teaching of the Buddha, then it takes many lifetimes to do it. But once you come across the teaching of the Buddha, then you know exactly what you need to do. So, yeah. so if our parami is enough or still not enough, we don't know. We just put the effort. It doesn't matter whether you have enough or not enough. What you have to do now is put in the effort and do the dana balami, do the meta balami, do the sila balami. This you can do, right? Can, can you not do this? Dana balami, share your, your wealth with other people. Mm. Keep just enough for your, for your necessity. And then the extra money, give it away, make other people happy, and you will be happy that way also. Dila, don't hurt other, other beings. You know? Give the, the five precepts, the eight precepts. Tomorrow I take the eight precepts. Okay. Do it every day, not just tomorrow. <laughs> And you One say you don't have it, and you say you don't have barami. That's because you don't do it. That's why <laughs> it's so Every simple. Day. Your output depends on your input. You know, the more input yeah. you put in, the more output you get. Mm. Okay. Mm. I you're, running well, out, um... you're running out of time. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 You know what? I'm going to the last person, Sulan. Always last. She always planned her, planned her time to come in last. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Ajahn. Uh, nice to see you again. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, kind of like unpacking my stuff. Just came back um, today um, from my trip. Yeah. From your sensual pleasure trip. Huh? Yeah, sensual yeah. pleasure trip. <laughs> yeah. I went to like uh, Taiwan. And then, like, uh, look at um, different places. Mm. Why is it so easy to go on, on a holiday and so hard to go on a meditation retreat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, but uh, I'm going for a meditation retreat this uh, long weekend. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, it's still shorter than my holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you, you try. Try maybe soon later you might be able to do more more retreat and less less trip less holiday trip. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, hopefully so. Mm. Okay, you have any question? Oh, um, yeah. I just wanted to uh update Ajahn that um I've shared um your advice with my father. You know um the part that on the huge spider that he sees, yeah. So uh, uh, hopefully it will improve from there. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Is that all? Mm. Yeah, that's all. I, I just feel a bit sad when I um, kind of talk to my father because he keeps saying to me that um, his time is up and so on, but I don't know how to respond to him also. Mm. Mm. If you don't know how to respond, then don't respond. <laughs> <laughs> so simple. Mm. Uh, but wouldn't I be like ignoring him? No, because you cannot, you don't know how to respond. So how do you respond if you don't, if you, you don't know how to respond? Just tell me, um, I don't know how to respond. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh that, that's true also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Nice talking to you. Yeah. Nice talking to Ajahn. Thank you so much. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we'll go to Facebook page. Facebook now. Do we have any questions? Yes. There are two questions from Facebook, Tanajan. And the first question is from Aun. Good evening, Ajahn and admin. I'm Bun Un. My question is, 
when lay people practice meditation, how to differentiate among the first, second, third, and fourth jhana. Thanks, Ajahn and Admin, for live Dhamma discussion, Satu. Oh, when you meditate, you don't want to differentiate anything. You just want to wash your breath. Or wash, cut, focus on your meditation object. If you use mantra, just stay with mantra, bhuto, bhuto. Don't do any, any, any reflecting on where you are now on your, on your, on your path, on your practice. Because if you do that, you won't get anywhere. The goal is to stop thinking. So don't do any thinking when you meditate. Just keep focused on your breath. Uh, if you use the mantra, just use the mantra. Stay with the mantra. And then all the four stages will, will come naturally, like an automatic transmission. You don't have to worry. The, the automobile will, will shift for you automatically. You just put in the drive and then step on the gas and then the transmission will, will, will change automatically. Same thing with the jhana. You don't have to worry which jhana you're in, first jhana, second jhana, or third jhana. Just keep watching your breath or, or recite your mantra, bhutto, bhutto. That's all you need to do when you, med when you meditate. And last question from Ai Mai Soon. Good evening, Ajahn. How do we learn to forgive the person who has repeatedly hurt you emotionally, especially when the person is our family, as well as forget what the person has done? Thank you. Well, the Buddha said, if somebody hurt you, like if they said, say something bad, you should think at least they didn't beat you yet. If they beat you, then say at least they haven't killed you yet. If they kill you, then say, well, that's what life's going to end anyway. So, you know, so be it. <laughs> if you can think like this, then you won't get angry at that person. Just, just let that person do whatever that person wants to do. If you cannot avoid or uh, escape, but if you can avoid or escape, then don't face that person. That's all. Stay away from that person. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. How do you want to say something? I don't just watch it. No, huh? Okay. Well, it looks like that's about the time we have for tonight. Uh, today. Thank you for your participation in this meeting. And I hope you can benefit and use it to help you advance in your practice. In the meantime, please stay safe, stay mindful, and keep on practicing. And if all goes well, I'll see you all at the same time next week. Thank you and goodbye. Satu Thank you. 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 Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.